Well, hey everybody, it's Nate coming to you with another Chords and Coffee, and this is pretty cool. Serendipity and destiny sometimes shake hands, and here we are. My man, yes. Toby Friesen, from a few Chords and Coffees ago, happened to be on tour with Jeremy Camp. Yes, sir. And you're in the Springfield area. Yes, we are. Getting ready to play. Yes, we are. And so we figured it'd be really cool as kind of a part two of our conversation to look at some of the gear that you're using live because we referred to it and talked about it. But now here it is in action, in the heat of battle. Speaking of which, his shield bearer. That's right. <laughs> it's kind of a biblical thing, right? <laughs> Going up Mi'kmash. It's in there, look it up, I'll help you find it. Anyway. The Jonathan to my David. Exactly, there you go, there you go, right. There it is. This is Will Conger. Will How's is the tech on this tour. Now are you just working with Toby or are you working with everybody? I mainly, so I'm our, what's called our stage manager and our stage left backline tech. And so I kind of manage the hands and people that we have helping load in and out. And then also I take care of our keys world, Toby's world and also uh, Jeremy. And so his swaps during the show, his guitars and so. And you're doing keys too. Yeah, just, it, wow. just setting up the keyboards, it's, that's easy. You and don't managing, have to tune those. And managing all that and, and yeah, well that's, that's a lot. So we're just gonna start talking and I think it'd be cool maybe to start with the guitars. Let's do it. And if you remember that Chords and Coffee and if you haven't seen it, you should go back and watch it. But you got started in terms of I want to make sure I'm saying this right. You were in bands and you were doing the deal, but your first like big gig out on the road, you were teching. Is that right? Uh, that was my second, actually. Okay. I, I was in a band first that we formed in college. Signed a record Jackson deal. Waters. Jackson Waters. See there? Yeah. Yeah. And then out of Jackson Waters, I teched for Need to Breathe for, for a year. Gotcha. And uh, so I love, I developed a love for gear. Yeah. And, and, and uh, the that side of things, maintenance and and uh, appreciation for the differences, understanding why things sound the way they do or work the way they do. And, and when I found Will, somebody who thinks the same way but just better at it, it was like finding a long lost brother. So well, that's yeah, awesome. That's well, great. I have to ask though, so I, I've been playing guitar for a little over 30 years. Amazing. And well, thank you. But I, I don't like, if you put a truss rod in my hand, mm -hmm and said, Nate, adjust your guitar. I'd be like, ha, 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 you know? <laughs> it's, I mean, I, I could do it, but like oh, uh -huh. on some guitars, like on like on a 52 Tele saw where you have to take the neck oh, off. Oh, I know, that's And then, you know, you got the capo on the strings, you're doing all yeah. this kind of stuff. Um, I just, it's just, I've just never, I don't cut my own hair either. That's kind of the way I look at it, right? <laughs> so I'm just curious, because you did it for a year and this is your gig, does that, oftentimes help things because the shorthand of the language or sometimes you're like hey bro i got it just just you know yeah no I, here. it definitely helps <laughs> yeah Starting with the right. high take. i just Put wish toby would just zip his lips shut no, <laughs> <laughs> no it really helps because there is lingo that people throw like i worked in a guitar store for a couple years and you get people coming in like my blah 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 is off and they don't even know what that word means right, and right. so and feel um, right if a yeah. guitar doesn't play right yeah. everybody says my intonation's off and not yeah. a lot of people even know what intonation is and so when we're talking about certain things and toby's like oh i'm noticing this when i'm playing and he uses that word or he uses string action or like string even string gauge size like figuring stuff like that out like it totally helps um to know oh and it just makes it super quick to diagnose things so yeah, so like I just need a quarter turn. Or whatever. I, I didn't think about that, but that, yeah. that makes sense. That would be, and there's that light, by the way, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Perfect timing. Oh. Exactly. Oh. God. Exactly. So we're here, and how many guitars do you carry with you when you're? Uh, so I personally carry four in the vault that I use. Mm -hmm. And then we have space for a couple of Jeremy's acoustics. Mm -hmm. And then we also leave a slot for the bass guitar. Mm -hmm. um, which is on a stand out there somewhere. But uh, yeah, let's, let's go through these. Yeah, let's go. So this is uh, my most recent one. Um, hey, I know that brand. Yes, sir. So Johnny from LSL was a wonderful human being. And uh, he contacted me. The story is actually kind of amazing. Um, so they had an artist named uh, Adam from a band called The Architects. Mm -hmm. And Adam had a signature guitar and he, uh, it was a baritone, and they're, they, they're, he had a great, has a great relationship with Johnny and LSL, and it was understood for a long time that, that um, 
that it was that it was for a period of time, a limited time thing that he was working with him in in, in that manner. And so when the time came for him uh, to work with another company, he had some credit built up um, that he didn't need, and um, Johnny approached him about transferring those credits to me and, oh, wow. and just out of the blue and Adam Good on you, Johnny. very yeah. generous yeah. was like yeah man absolutely and yeah. so this guitar was an out of the blue blessing from Johnny and LSL um, and thank you to Lance and everybody at LSL for, for this um, and to Adam because this this was um, unexpected and but it's it's such a sweet guitar it's named Ruby Max Oh yeah, and uh, which is named after my wife's uh, grandmother, whom she never met. And you go and into that story in detail. I'm going to keep plugging. Yeah, go her back to the closing <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. So is that is that a maple that's stained kind of like a black, it like a is. roasted maple so thing? It's kind of like a. They, I think they called it like their their. It was like a barn stain, like an old school. I love that. Yeah. I, I didn't know they did that. It's and like, beautiful. I'm definitely going to talk to them about getting some guitars like that. What's the next? Is it a chunky neck? So go ahead and feel it. I, I find Ooh. it very comfortable. No, I that's, really that's, enjoy that's, that. that is that is not thin. That is not a U-shaped 52, but it ain't far off. You know what I mean? That's I'm, a big neck. I've I've got, you know, I'm kind of a tall guy, 6'3". Yeah. I've got... You can palm a basketball. I, I, I can. So yeah. for me, it just kind of sits right in there real nice. And the weight is perfect it's on It's really there. great. Yeah. So they've got their own pickups, the PAF and their P90. And yeah, that's cool. Yeah, this that is super fun. cool. I play this guitar primarily on the song called Keep Me in the Moment. Mm -hmm. which is it tuned to something weird? It's standard, actually. Okay. Most of my guitars I keep in standard. Um, an occasional song I'll use drop D. Mm -hmm. I used to travel with half of my guitars in E flat, half step down. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I let the Helix do all my detuning. Oh, um, really? It, it will do More it for me. More on that later, yeah. Yeah. The next one we have here uh, is by Dude! a company called Veritas Guitars. Yeah, look at that. And uh, Casey uh, and Jeremy at Veritas are awesome dudes. And they moved down from the, um, the northwest part of the country, the Vancouver, Portland area. They're now in our neck of the woods down in Tennessee. Oh, they're cool. They're good people, uh, good buddies, and uh, uh, they call this model the Texas Miracle. The Texas Miracle. That's right. And uh, um, this is one that uh, I've experimented with the pickups. This is a Seymour Duncan 5.2. So it's got Amico 5 magnets here and Amico 2 magnets here. Mm -hmm. Snappier on the low strings and, and not quite as bright on the, the treble strings. And then this is a Fender uh, Twisted Telly. Oh yeah, um, those so are great. A little bit more stratty in the mm -hmm. neck. I really enjoy this guitar. Big neck again on that one? It, it, it is, yeah. Feel free to, to, yeah. to grab it. I'll, oh yeah, it's not as big as that one. Mm. But I, I feel I, the... I feel um, uh, that I enjoy the comfort. It just kind of sits right in there. Um, also, don't you feel like you get a, just a skosh more sustain when the neck is a little bit bigger too? Or maybe it's because you feel like you have a little bit more control? I think that's probably what it is. Yeah. I think I just yeah. feel connected to it. I like big to necks it. too. They've done this thing where they, they this is a set in, glued in mm. neck, and so um, I've got some really comfortable access up here. Not that I'm really a shredder, <laughs> to get, and I'm not doing this a whole lot, but it is really comfortable to get up there. I appreciate that That's about a cool it. guitar. Yeah. Um, this next guitar, is a Gretsch uh, Country Gentleman Players Edition. And uh, this, this was an unexpected, um, fallen in love with it on this tour, actually. Yeah. So I'd, I had done a trade with my buddy David Leonard, and uh, we traded Gretsch's, actually. I had a, I had a- As you do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, had, I had the Black Falcon model of the Players Edition, mm -hmm. and he, just loved that guitar, loved that guitar, and you're like, and he said, hey man, I've got this one, would you want to trade? And, and I said, sure. And I took it out here because we're doing Christmas songs. We're doing four Christmas songs on this Christmas tour. Mm -hmm. um, and Will and I were just on the phone before leaving for tour. Hey man, what, what guitars should we bring out? I think, oh, we should try that, Gretsch. Like, it's the Christmas tunes, like yep. we should do that. And I have absolutely fallen in love with this thing. It's, it's a different thing than the Black Falcon was. Yeah. And I find that um, the pickups are just sit right in there so well. Not overly muddy, not overly bright, but present and clear. They ring out. 
It's got great sustain. The, the Bigsby feels wonderful. It, and it's it's hollow. The painted F holes. I was just going to say something about you know that, that's yeah. always struck me as interesting. I, if you've never seen one of these, this F hole is just painted on. It's and but it is hollow. Yeah. It's just you know yeah. there's no F hole to it, and you got to wonder if that doesn't make it's got to be something some that kind of sympathetic yeah. acoustic kind of chamber thing or something. Yeah. I have I have yeah. really enjoyed yeah. playing this, and and uh, so I think it's here to stay. Have you um, have you had to do anything? And I'm just asking because I know sometimes with Gretsch's the the bridge guys will do modifications to this, or it's just like as it left the factory. No, um, I, unless you did anything, I don't. Nothing much. It stays in tune really, it really, really well. It really, really does. I've missed when I got it from David. It, need, it needed a good setup. It had just kind of been sitting there for a while. Um, there are. Um, it's not pinned like sometimes we do with floating bridges, but mm -hmm. it does. It does have a little slot on the underside of the wood here, and then there's a little bit, uh, there's, there's a thing that sticks up, so it, it'll go on there, and there's a little bit of, of wiggle room front and back. But to it's not tune. totally floating like it would normally. Exactly, yeah, it's yeah. not gonna go like yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 very cool. Yeah, and they, some of the other modern things that they've done on the player's edition is instead of the posts on the Bigsby, they've drilled holes straight through, so you just put the string straight through mm -hmm. and you don't have to bend it first anymore to get it to, to sit on the post and then come under and then they've got the locking tuners mm -hmm. um so yeah it really stays in tune very well yeah i the um the first time you change strings on a guitar with the bigsby <laughs> is one of those moments where you're like what happened <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> yep that is Try the it. best bigsby <laughs> design yeah, for yeah. Sure. now this guy is also a uh, veritas this is a mini master this is one that I that I custom ordered from Casey, and and I, you know I picked every detail about it. Actually, same with that one. And uh, initially, this came with a pickguard that was loaded with two humbuckers. Mm -hmm. I had sold a Les Paul, um, and I wanted something that would do have a Les Paul feel. And then a few years ago, um, Jeremy's songs I noticed had more of of, of a modern pop strat type tones in the songs. And I wanted something that could do those traditional strat sounds, like with the two and, and the four position, and even, and even just the straight neck kind of strat feel. And then I can go to the bridge when I, when I need the, the rock humbucker thing. So I, this is probably one of my most versatile guitars. And um, I think I showed this one in the video, Chords and Coffee. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this has been one that I have played ever since the day I got it and really enjoyed it. Kind of a unique thing. You got yeah. kind of a, a single, single humbucker with a Gibson style set up with the offset saddles body. And, yeah, yeah. And an and, offset body. And then if you could flip switch. this over, this part of the paint job yeah. is crazy hard here yeah. for them to come in and to do that, yeah. that uh, pinstriping inlay kind of thing there and then to have it get that thin. And that was your idea? Yeah. 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 You think they were cussing you just a little bit? <laughs> he was excited. Okay, he good. was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, we could do this, we could do that, we could do this. Yeah. And I was like, yes, let's yeah. absolutely. Um, always oh, the little the eagles are back there. Yeah, yeah. They picked some good music for the, uh, for the system, tuning the system. Nice. All right, so then those are all Jeremy's there. And we, oh, actually, you got one more. We, yeah, yeah. We need to talk about this oh, one. Yeah. And I'm going to let Will talk about this one. Okay, very this, cool is Mallory Handcrafted Guitars, which is Will Conger. What's this Mallory is, from? Mallory's my wife. Oh, so, that's awesome. This is actually Jeremy's guitar, and he built this for Jeremy. So I'll let you go ahead and tell about it. <laughs> so I've been building since 2023, and um, started kind of as a passion um, that happened during COVID. Everybody else had to find something to do. So yeah. I had a friend from high school who uh, I knew his dad had a wood shop, and I've always been handy and liked making things. So I was like, "Hey, we should build guitars." And so we uh, we built a couple Tele bodies, painted them, and threw Mexican fender necks on them, and that kind of started it. And I've been building since. And so now I offer three different models on my website. You can find them. Um, this is my Tele inspired thing for sure. Um, but, and then I have more of a vintage-y looking P90 inspired guitar. And then I have a new model that um, is being completed right now called my Hawthorne. That is a, my take on a Starcaster. It's flat oh, okay. top and then 
um, like mastery trim on it and everything. But yeah, so this one, um, I had brought out some prototypes. I had shown Jeremy and shown Toby, and then Jeremy, one night on the bus, he's like, Will, you need to build me a guitar. I was like, oh, okay, sweet. So that's where this was birthed. Um, this is the first model of this guitar. Jeremy liked the Tele shape. Uh, and then Jeremy customized everything on it. It's the first one that we've done any form of like custom inlays. So we have camp inlaid on the 12th fret and then bind it, bound neck and block inlays. Um, I like this little touch right here. Is yeah, that you or is that him? Uh, that's me. So yeah. the, the company is Mallory Handbook Guitars. It's named after my wife. I, did, I had no clue what to name my company because Will Conger, just I don't know. I didn't like the name of Conger Guitars for some reason. And then I was like, well, I love my wife and I want to give her the best of the best. So when I build a guitar, I want to give my customer my very best. And so that's that's what these are built after. So yeah, he wanted the dual humbucker. They're uh, Lambertones pickups, if you've heard of them. Oh, yeah, sure. Great dude, um, vintage PAF inspired. And uh, yeah, it rocks. He he just rails on it, plays some rhythm guitar on how, it. How big is the neck on that? How big? It's, so here, yeah. feel it, man. Yeah. It's a very standard And that's a, that's a little more, is that, that's mahogany right there. It, so it's a Pele, it's a cousin of mahogany. Gotcha, had, yeah. We had scrolled through some pictures and he's like that, and then I found this piece of wood and I was like, Jeremy's jacked. So yeah. I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't give him some tiny guitar. Right, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We love our lightweight resonant guitars, but I needed something that when he picked it up, didn't feel like a toy to him. So yeah, yeah, we yeah. picked out some, well, some dense it. wood. Yeah, that, that, yeah, well that's cool, man. And is that Fire Miss Gold? Is that what yep. that is? Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, I actually have a telly in that exact color. Nice. That's really cool, man. man. Thank you for showing me that. That's awesome. All right, so then we got a couple of acoustics, and what do we got here? Uh, this is Jeremy's um, kind of backup acoustic, per se. We have this um, Jared, actually his brother who plays with us now, um, mm -hmm. has been playing this for a couple songs, and then he just brought out, he's got a J45 that we're gonna start using. Is that is that an older one, or is that one that's just been put through the ringer? It, it fell off of an off of a wall hanger. <laughs> okay, yeah, that'll work, yeah. <laughs> but Jeremy's kind of main thing is he's, he's had this guitar for what, 20 years? Long time. Uh, McPherson guitars, sure. he's, he's had this specific one. You go back, he's got crazy looking hair and bleach tips and he's got this guitar playing it everywhere. So it's been through a lot, um, still plays well. I honestly need to take it home and start um, we got some side cracks that probably need glued here soon, and um, yeah, but he loves this thing. He's been a... Always sounds good. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, which one of your guitars are we going to pluck today? I think we're going to do the Mini Master. Oh, very the cool. One. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's that, okay, you've played the snot out of that, and it needs to get a little pleck resurrection. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, and so what do we got right in here? Yeah, so this is, this is the amp world here. Mm -hmm. And uh, this might be the last uh, iteration of this that we see because we might be redoing this for the spring tour. Mm -hmm. But this is how it's been for the last few years. Um, have swapped some amps in and out. Um, this, is, this is, I think, the backbone of my tone. I've used this one for years. This is a Tyler Amps. And it's a Tweed Basement style. And uh, John with Tyler Amps and his son, John Tyler, um, have been just incredibly uh, gracious and generous and helpful um, uh, with, with us out here and supplying me with some great tone. Um, so I would say this is my main one. And then I've got a couple other flavors here as well. This is his HM18, which is a British flavored 18 watt EL84 head. Mm -hmm. And then I picked this thing up because um, um, I, I love deluxe reverbs, um, and this essentially, the Supersonic 22, is a deluxe reverb, um, but the second channel is a gain stage rather than just having a, a, a normal and bright channel. And um, so I, I looked to see if Fender still made a deluxe reverb head, which they don't have in production. They used to at some point, but this is the closest to it. It's the platform, it's the 22 watt 6v6 platform that Fender does. 
And so this first channel is very, very deluxe reverb -y. Yeah. And so I really enjoy the combination of that and the 6L6 basement thing that this does so well. So I, I lean Fender yeah. uh, when it comes to amps. And then I like, to, I like to sprinkle in some British EL84 styles as well. So are you switching between these or are you doing like a combination of these I'm, two? I'm and combining them, yeah. At all times? At or? all times, yeah. Oh, very cool. And I, I've got... And I've got such a kind of Frankenstein setup here. Nothing really matches. No, that's great. But we, uh, we love to experiment with cabs and speakers. And uh, so here we have a couple of cabs. This is a Morgan cab. Yeah. And uh, I've replaced the speaker in this Morgan um, with a warehouse guitar speaker, so WGS, their G12C. And... Uh, I called them up and said, hey, I need a speaker that would work well with the American style tone, the Fender style tone, and they recommended this one, and I've been really, really happy with it. And we were going to Canada the very next day, and I was terrified that, that it wasn't gonna make it in time or, or the border crossing customs was gonna take my speaker or something. But no, it, it went, it, they got it there in time and there were no issues. And then this one, we've got a greenback and this is a Stereo Rivera 212. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm actually running the Fender through just the greenback. And then on this side, I've got the Reaper High Power, um, which is uh, akin to a G12H30, but at 50 watts rather than 30 watts. And I really like running kind of British style amps through this. Um, I, I, I ran um, Matchless, through here and it felt really nice. To me, it, 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 it let the characteristic of um, the bright, in-your-face clarity of the match just shine through without being too harsh. Yeah. And uh, so that's, and then I use uh, the amp clamp, uh, and the, uh, which, is, which is a bracket that you screw into the side of your amp and you put your cap or your mic into here and it just slides right into place when I can see it. There we goes. So that if your cab were to, to move, the, it always stays That's in awesome. place. And so this, since this is a stereo amp, then you've got a head going to one speaker yep. and then a head going to the other yep, speaker. Exactly. That's cool. Well, let's look at some pedal. So check this out. You want to get in here? So are you using, is this is this all you? No, this this particular board is for the band New Song. Their bass player Mark. That's ah, his board. Gotcha. So gotcha. he's stage left as well on this gotcha. tour. Gotcha. This using, this rig is mine, and I'm since I'm band leader, I'm running playback for us as well. And so we've got a redundant playback Ableton system here. In case something goes bad. And uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and so, so these are tracks, is that what? That's exactly yeah. right. Yep. And so you're cueing songs by hitting one mm -hmm. of these buttons? Yep, I've got the names of the songs or the shorthand of, of the songs on here and I'll, and I'll pick a song, hit play. And um, so that's one of the things that, because I was responsible for this, I switched from the full pedal board with a bunch of individual pedals where getting ready for the next song was kind of like this. Yeah. And, and, and I could... Or like that. Or like that, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, this is a lot. It is. How, so you've got this going on over here with your hands, you've got feet activities, you've got face activities. <laughs> I remember you talking about in our Chords and Coffee where you had to simplify. This yep. does not look simple, but it is, is what you're saying. Uh, my goal is to, to take as least amount of brain space as possible Amen so that, that I can focus yeah. on he looks like he's having a good time, yeah. you know? <laughs> and rather than going, ah, ah. Uh, so we, what you see here is you've got a vocal mic here, you've got my pedal board here, you've got the tracks playback system here, and then this is a talkback microphone. This has a little switch that turns it on and off. So this only, the only people that hear me here are, are the band guys, not Jeremy, the band guys and our tech guys in case we need something changed in our ear mix or I need to remind the guys, hey, this part's coming up, we changed this today, let's remember, or 
or we just make silly comments to each other, you know, make jokes, keep things fresh, keep things interesting. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that really got me excited about switching over to the Helix for the brain and the, as my pedal board was that it takes MIDI signals and I can select a song. We start the show, Jingle Bell Rock, so I'll hit Jingle. And when I hit play, it sends a note and it automatically changes my board oh. preset to Jingle right there. And I'll select the next song. Um, you know, I'll go to Hark the Herald, hit play, and then boom, it changes to Hark right there on its own. What? And so it's a whole different preset menu exactly. of activities. Exactly. Nice. So in between songs. Hey, my phone just decided to start playing. I need to And it and also it'll turn on. It turns on his phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on your phone. Yeah. yeah that's a quick promo. Um, so, so like, you, so song is, is done and you're literally over here yeah. doing, and are these like in set order? No, they're not. They're just kind of in the order that I decided to write them. I got you. Uh, I got you. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. It, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> some of the songs I have automatically jumping markers, it'll, it'll, I can assign a MIDI note to a marker in here so that when it passes that marker, it thinks that I hit a MIDI note, but it's just a digital MIDI note and it'll jump to the next song. So even if I have, if so, if I don't even have time to, to stop, hit stop, cue the next song, it'll just jump from song to song. Mm -hmm. As there are moments of the set where we just want it to go bang, bang. Mm -hmm. And other times where he wants to talk and, and we have more breathing room or we need to do a guitar change. The other day, I, I had to go wired because there was some interference on my wireless pack. And, and I, go, I switch guitars so much slower when I have a, 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 a cable. And so by the time I reached through my strap, unplugged my guitar, switched it back to him, the next song was already going. And oh. I, well, I was supposed to come in there, but I'll wait until verse one. <laughs> <laughs> Make people think it was on purpose. But, uh, when so. you guys are doing your guitar changes, how does, are, are you, how, do you come all the way out here or do you go all the way back there? No, he runs up to us right where we are. Okay. And oftentimes he'll have one for me and one for Jeremy. Okay. So depending on the song, he knows which one of us to go to first. And he'll hand, I'll take it, hand him the other one, and I usually have we my wireless We both do backflips back. right <laughs> yeah. after, so it's like swap, it makes back sense. Flip. And we, we try to make stuff. eye contact and, and give each other an encouraging smile every time. It's kind of our thing. It's like, oh, you're great, thanks buddy, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love um, it. Encouragement goes a long way. That's right, absolutely. Well, this is great. You got a couple of pedals on here. I see yes, a couple sir. of JHS uh, kilts in a morning glory. Yep, so this is my always on. It's kind of like my preamp. I, I really, really have enjoyed the transparent amp-like overdrive quality of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I have this drop pedal is one that I've had for years that and this is just, amazing isn't it, it is it is so so cool both in the studio using baritone effects or or live when you don't want to have a guitar that's half step down or full step down so I used that before I got the helix but the helix now also has a poly capo function where you can go not only down but also up and you can tune up, which is like, wow, this is so versatile. So as long as I remember that it's on, <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> but there have been a few times where I have forgotten to turn this pedal off and I start the song in the wrong key and that's just n not great. Rock or, or your guitar yeah. tech forgets uh, to plug in the MIDI yeah. cable. We were on Winter Jam <laughs> in front of 10,000 people and, and I was back on a riser somewhere as a part of the performance of the song so far away from my pedal board and I'm start I mean it was I'm the right second the song in the set it. yeah where the where the guitar part is kind of the focal point of the intro and and it was a half step off nice which just kind of sounds like <laughs> somebody's throwing up it's just, it's, it wasn't great and it was, uh, it was we just realized at the same I knew time. it I knew what happened immediately and we just ran up here and <laughs> grabbed the midi cable I was like ah <laughs> I mean, it's never it's never happened again though. That's right, because the beating was so bad afterward. <laughs> to Toby threatened to fire me. He's, yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, no, it's not go. anything I haven't done myself before. Uh, uh, I mean, the, you, having moments like that, it's like we, we were just Jordan and I were just talking about that in the way. It's like if you don't go through moments where you feel like, how am I going to get through this? Mm. Then you you don't have the necessary equipment mentally yeah. and spiritually yeah. to be able to pass sure. through the thing that you really want to pass through. You know what I mean? I've messed up a lot. Yeah. I'm good at messing up. Yeah. And so yeah. the side benefit of that is that I realize that my value is not in 
perfection. My value is not in um, being the, the best, like the perfect guitar player, because I'm not, I'm not a machine. Uh, the human element is what makes it beautiful and it also makes it flawed and, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And we do our best, like I don't wanna mess up. I try my best to play as, as cleanly as I can. But when stuff happens, I can still sleep at night. Yeah, know? absolutely. Because we do our best and, and we, we try to keep it in perspective. And and uh, so well, you got to learn to get good at recovery. Oh, 100%. And, there's, and there's no other way to do that. It's like people you know would never know if our yeah. hopefully they would never know if our ears go out or something fails or the the interference is you know oh, in, yeah. in your in ears just like okay like, never know I got to be able to take my ear out and just play like nothing's wrong. So. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Um, it's Austin City Limits. Steve Ray Vaughan breaks a string. Yeah, and his tech comes it's out. It's just amazing. You don't get to do that unless you've done it a hundred times. Sure, you know exactly. what I mean. And like when they change strings, it's literally like in time and it's yeah, just like it's perfect. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. So you got the kilt for a little fuzz. Yep, exactly. That's a super uh, a versatile drive and Stu is such a good guy um, mm -hmm. I've enjoyed interacting with him over the years and uh, and that has multiple game stages as well and so I will I will throw that on um, in the song Mary did you know on oh. this tour and I'm totally totally ripping off a DC talk riff in that song mind's eye it just uh, hit me right before this tour like that riff will work in this song so shout out to DC talk Jesus freak record one of my favorites from when I was younger, and so that kilt I'm, uh, I, I have programmed for that for that part of this of the set, and we do a song called um, "Dead Man Walking," which we're not doing on the Christmas tour because it's our most rocking song. It has a big mm -hmm. solo on the outro, and I use it for that as well. Nice, but in the studio that will go kind of a gated fuzzy thing, mm -hmm. and it'll also do the expandora, just a great overdrive as well. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Are you compression always on? Or? I am. I'm just kind of used to it. It's, there you go. It's, it's at the front of my signal chain, and I just like the feel. My hands are used to playing with a compressor on, and I, you know, some guys I think will just go seasons where they always have it on, and then they'll take it off and go, oh, it feels refreshing, mm. and they'll play without it, and then okay. So, for me, it's I'm just used to to have it on. It's not really squashing my signal. It's not the kind of quite the country squash, but I do enjoy the way that I feel like it just levels out everything. And it's the very first thing? After, the, so the very, very first thing is the drop, because mm -hmm. I've noticed that likes to oh, be yeah, the first yeah, thing from my guitar. Be, yeah. But then otherwise, it goes compressor. And then overdrive. And, and then oh. it'll go into my Helix, which has four send and return loops. Ah, like that's a true bypass these, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So I have those in there. And then I have the tuner coming out of a loop as well after the detune function so uh, that I can always see the reading of what it is coming out of the heat. That's, that, okay, that's a pretty good tip because if you don't, you'd be looking at you know, tuning your A string, right. but it may be sounding A flat. So that's kind of a little cheat code 100%. so that you can actually- That's my safety net. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's smart. Yeah. Um, what is this mystery button? Yeah, so this is actually an expression pedal. What's and, it expressing? Uh, so it is hooked up to the Helix, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's expressing uh, joy, uh, excitement. Exactly. Uh, Roll course and coffee, yeah. old boy! <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I'm playing at my church, I'll have uh, it controlling the, uh, the feedback and the uh, mix of the delays that I'm using. So it kinda, it's, it's real time uh, making my delays more lush and, yeah, and pulling for like back. volume swells and stuff, or just so uh, mostly just for when the, when the song gets quiet and I just want to take up more space, ah. uh, versus when more people are in the song and I want to take up less space. And you like you like boy that that just feels like um, that's like a a loaded pistol and shoved in the front <laughs> of your pants. You know what I mean? That just feels kind of dangerous, but also authoritative. <laughs> Living on the edge, right? Because like I mean, this does not this is not boot compatible. You see this? No, you're right. It's not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to have kind of uh, some well, rubber soles there. There you and go. It's is that little... a Beetle reference, or that just Ooh, happens? Oh man, that I'm, just, I'm, that just... I am fast, bro. <laughs> that just happened. Yeah. No, I like no that's that. cool. So that, that's that's how you're doing that. Wow. That was you know, that came from my good friend Jesse Garcia, um, and he was the guitar player for years in a band called Building 429. Oh yeah. And uh, and he's since retired from touring, um, but I've had that pedal for man 
15 years, it feels like. Just That's cool, well, you can't get rid of it. Yeah, and it, it's such a great space saver. Um, I've got a couple of, uh, like the mini Dunlop expression pedals, volume pedals that'll do volume or expression, but um, maybe if I change kind of my layout, I'll do that. Um, well, hey, if it's working, it's working. Yeah. I love it. Also, shout out to uh, LSL Instruments. They've got a new line of pedals coming out. Um, and today I'm, I'm picking up a Vital Distortion, the Vital DS. So I have a feeling it's gonna find its way into my rig as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, that's awesome. Uh, so now we just need to get that guitar plexed yeah. and get back here. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Thanks for watching Chords and Coffee. We're doing different stuff all the time, trying new things. You're gonna wanna stay tuned and stay in the loop. All you gotta do is hit that subscribe button. When you hit that button, it'll notify you that every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., this is what we're doing, and we are doing life the best we can with a guitar in our hands. We'll see you, friends, next Saturday at 9 a.m. for Chords and Coffee.